Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? It's Friday. <clears throat> How am I doing? Uh, well, I'm pretty much over the hot weather by now. Um, I was so hot in bed last night, I could have been basted in my own juices. Uh, in the unlikely event that it rains in the next few weeks, you will find me sat in it quite possibly with steam coming off me. Now, before I hit the go button on today's show, I just wanted to say a very quick welcome to all of the new followers I appear to have picked up over on LinkedIn in the past few days. No idea what I did to deserve that sudden surge in popularity, but thank you for joining us. And incidentally, keep it under your hat, but our merch store now has a new line in hats, T-shirts, bags, and hoodies that all feature a very exclusive Breakfast Show design. Um, you'll be able to find that and many more just like it over in our merch store. I'll add a link in the chat in just a second. Uh, now, without further ado, let me roll the intro, post the question of the day, there isn't one, uh, and get the show on the road. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It is Friday the 12th of August, and as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, we're travelling to Texas for some awesome scraper action. We're also travelling back in time to check out a Terex dozer in action. We're going to feature the sheer power of Caterpillar attachments once again. There's another hot new project lead, this time down in Kent. And we're also taking a tour of one of the biggest civil engineering projects in Europe, if not the world. And we'll get to all of that in just a second. But first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday on this day of days. Happy birthday! And it's many happy returns to legendary filmmaker Cecil B. DeMille and to physicist Erwin Schrodinger, you know, the guy with the cats. A happy birthday also to the leader of the Dam Busters, Guy Gibson, to the founders of the Guinness Book of World Records, uh, twins Ross and Norris McWhorter, and to Dire Straits frontman Mark Knopfler, to August Darnell, better known to the world as Kid Creole, culture club guitarist Roy, uh, Roy Hay, tennis superstar Pistol Pete Sampras, to actor Casey Affleck, and to controversial footballer Mario Bellatelli, and rounding him all off is the Gypsy King himself, boxer Tyson Fury. But far, 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 far more importantly, today marks the birthday of a man, a myth and a legend, a man with a fixation upon sprocket alignment and the fortunes of the world construction industry. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and raise a glass to Mr. Kenneth Hatcher on his birthday. Many happy returns to them, one and all, but mainly to Ken. <laughs> Right, who fancies a trip to Texas? Let's face it, the temperature's about the same and there's no shortage of cowboys on this side of the pond either. So let's head for the Lone Star Strait for a little scraper action. Hi, I'm Robert Mullins. I'm the owner of Sendero Construction Services. I'm the former owner of Romco Equipment Company, the KTAC and Volvo dealer here in Texas. And now I'm the owner of Sendero Construction Services, a company that provides equipment operated rentals, mainly with the Volvo articulated truck pulling a KTAC scraper. By partnering with KTAC, we've been able to effectively lower the cost per yard that we can provide to a contractor. Our EOR program is a concept where the people that are renting the machine also provide the operator. And I felt that the operator training and the quality operator were so important to getting max production that we would go ahead and take over the responsibility of providing the operator so the customer knows that when a KTEC and a Volvo articulated truck show up on his job site, he's going to have max productivity from the very beginning. The Volvo tractors are running around 11 to 15 gallons an hour in fuel. And by application, we're usually seeing the lower half of that. And customers are finding that with today's market, that's a huge benefit to not only how they cost and bid their work, 
But what we can provide for them as a savings has become quite important to our marketability. We feel that the KTEC gives us the best flotation of any of the scrapers on the market today. With their big tire footprint that they have, plus the tire footprint of the articulated truck, that we've taken the scraper out of a sometimes can work into more of a, it will work. If I was to describe the KTEC product, I would use, in a single word, durable, but it's not limited to that. They're built superior for the construction market, and we put them to the test every day, and we're grateful for that strength of build and consistent, reliable piece of equipment. Sendero Construction Services is focused on the Texas market primarily, but we have jobs focused in New Mexico, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas. We've even gone as far as Georgia, and we're continuing to look for the right applications for our equipment and our operator strengths. The relationship with KTEC has always been good. They're a company that takes pride in what they're doing. They care that the customer is having a positive experience with their product. And I've been extremely impressed in today's world that they still take that kind of old school pride and satisfaction in building the best scraper on the market. Yeah, that is a terrific film. And I, for one, am delighted to see Scrapers back in the muck-shifting mix. Even though they are enjoying something of a resurgence at the moment, scrapers are a bit of a blast from the past, and we're going to stay in the past. In fact, we're going to travel back even further for our next clip. There will be a few among you that remember seeing the Terex 8250 in action. More specifically, there may be a few that remember hearing one, because those beauties packed a rear-mounted V12 Detroit diesel engine. Uh, sadly, you won't hear that in the film I'm about to play you, because the original sound wasn't that great. But while you're watching this, I will add a link in the chat so you can check out the longer version of the film yourself. But here is what dozers used to look like.
Can't help seeing a little bit myself in that dozer. Past its sell-by date, bit rough around the edges. They don't make them like us anymore. The Miller GT Series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting-edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. Under normal circumstances, we like to avoid featuring the same brand too often. However, it is clear that Caterpillar's video team have been extremely busy of late. Over the past week or so, we've featured their demolition jaws and their multi-processors. And now to complete the hat trick, hat trick, should I say, we're going to take a look at their demolition shears. I think we need a break from Caterpillar now. Um, I'm going to get to all of that in just a second. Um, and we've got a big film coming up for you in just a second. But we have a newcomer, Charlie Chambers, uh, a female, which is very welcome. I think there are two of them in the chat today. I think Lou's here as well, uh, which is great to see. Uh, loving the show, Dan. Um, now, um, Charlie, I'm not sure if anybody has explained the rules here, but as you are new around these parts, you get welcome confetti these days. Uh, there you are. That's for you, uh, to welcome you to the show. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And I now have the ability to uh, do this as well. Yeah, not everybody gets the show, but everybody that's just new certainly gets the confetti. Charlie, thank you very much indeed for being here. Hope you become a regular. Um, let's have a look. Let me get rid of that. Um, and I need to press a button. I think I'm going to press that <laughs> Thank you. 
Now then, demolition contractors within easy reach of South East London and Kent, lend me your ears, because this one is very much for you. Two million of your finest English quids have been set aside for the construction of a new data processing and storage centre at a site in uh, Cray Valley Road in Orpington in Kent. CRB contract, uh, Construction is among the companies vying for the new build element of the works, but before any construction can take place, an existing building requires the attention of a demolition contractor, and at the time of broadcast, a suitable demolition contractor has yet to be appointed. You can find out more about this project lead and countless more just like it over at buildersconference.co.uk. Alternatively, you might prefer to speak directly to Siobhan Jones using the number displayed at the foot of your screen. She is standing by to take your call. There are big projects, there are massive projects, and then there is Hinkley Point C, not just a site, but a self-contained city that's slowly emerging from the ground. To play out today's show, we're going to take a look at one of the biggest civil engineering projects in Europe. Get a load of this. Welcome to Hinkley Point C. Today we have around 7,500 people working here at the site. Recent events have really brought into focus the importance of this project from an energy, sovereignty, security and sustainability point of view and also the important part it plays in net zero by 2050. Today we're going to show you the great progress we've made. Follow me. From this position we go a great vista of Unit 1, especially the Nuclear Island Reactor Building behind me. You can see we've made great progress, we've now grown to 34 metres. And you can also see the big equipment hatch which we'll introduce the reactor pressure vessel and steam generators through. We have one more smaller ring now to fit and then we move on to actually fitting the dome which is behind me here on the left hand side which is actually completed. Let's go inside the reactor building. Welcome to Unit 1's reactor building. So you can see the great progress we've made since the, the last time we've done a virtual tour. Over 2022 we'll start to build the walls here the radial walls are up to around 19 and a half metres which is pretty much at the top of where this line of ring currently sits and I'll stand right in the area where the reactor pressure vessel will go. That reactor pressure vessel is due to leave the factory at the end of 2022 and will actually be fitted here through the equipment hatch in the second half of 2023. You also see we've introduced some large columns here and look to get this level up to around 19 and a half metres by the end of 2022. These columns themselves weigh around 200 tonnes, so fantastic piece of engineering. As well as completing the important construction activities, we have to think about the future and training our operators. Let me take you to our simulator building here where them operators will be taken through the important training activities they need to operate this huge plant. So we've popped into our fantastic state-of-the-art operational training centre and we're here in the gold full scope simulator where our operators can really hone their skills. An operator takes around two years to complete their training in both normal operation and fault scenarios. The operators themselves will be actually tested and assessed in this building so that they're on top of their game before we allow them to operate this huge piece of UK infrastructure. So welcome to the electrical building. This is, will be the beating heart of the electrical system for Hinkley Point C. You can see we're making good progress in, in installation of all the containment, which will carry all the cables, and actually the heating and ventilation systems behind me. The plan this year is to really gain momentum with mechanical, electrical and HVAC installation. We plan to hand over 300 rooms and start working 280 of them rooms. As you can see, our teams behind us are starting to make really good progress in installing the equipment and they'll be joined by lots of colleagues over the next six months. Welcome to Hinkley Point C Unit 1 Turbine Hall. Great progress since our last plant tour. We've actually built the external walls as you can see up to the level 2. The staircases are going up 
and we've actually put a 2,500 cube concrete pour on the top of the blue columns that we see last time. That will eventually house the biggest turbine in the world. The next key steps in this area are to complete the concrete walls, to actually build the staircases, and then the really important piece really for us is to build this structural steelwork. So about 64 sequences of steelwork that need to go in. On top of that we'll place a concrete slab and then we'll build the steelwork up to house a 300 tonne crane. We'll clad the building and that then will allow our General Electric colleagues to come in and actually start assembling the turbine unit itself. So we're now at the opposite end of the site to where we started. Behind me you get a really good view of the reactor building the turbine hall and where we are now in the heat sink. The heat sink itself started as a 30 metre hole. As you can see the structures are pretty much up now to ground level and these will house the big drum screens that will filter out all the debris from the sea that allow the CRF pumps to pump the, the water into the turbine hall. So fantastic progress here. We expect this building to be above ground level by the end of 2022. We're also starting to build the volutes which are the big pumps casings, which is a really intricate uh, civil structure. In front of me, all the work in the marine area, we've actually completed all of our tunnelling. So we've got two tunnels now that are three and a half kilometres out to sea, one that's just over 2.8. And this year's a really exciting year for us because we actually start to land the big intake and outlet heads, which the largest of which is 5,000 tonnes. So really big marine campaign this year, really exciting work over the summer months. That concludes our virtual tour for today. Obviously we've not been able to cover all the areas that are going on here at Hinkley Point. We're making really good progress in our grid substation where the 400,000 volt lines have been installed into the site. Transformers are being fitted. On Unit 2 there's also great progress and we're also seeing between 20 and 30% efficiencies in the construction activities which is vital to follow on new, to the new build projects including size we'll see. I hope you enjoyed the tour and I look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, the scale of that project just blows my mind. Seven and a half thousand people on a single project. Really astonishing. And as our friend uh, Al Grierson just said, what a gargantuan site. Um, interestingly, th there's a question from Gary Muirhead. Is it still on budget? I, I don't know, but I doubt it. And oddly enough, it's weird that you should ask that question. Um, I saw from Construction Inquirer this morning that they've uh, updated the progress on the new stadium for the Everton Football Club. And and it, it, it has actually made the news, the fact that the thing is still within budget, despite inflation rises in fuel and materials costs. The fact that a project makes the news for being within budget, doesn't that tell you everything you need to know about the modern construction world? Right, let's roll this. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or, better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Now, uh, just a couple of things before we uh, move on, and I leave you to go and enjoy your weekend. There is no Saturday social tomorrow, as I owe my wife a bit of overdue attention. Her words, not mine. Uh, but the weekend wrap will drop tomorrow just after dawn, so you don't escape that easily. Two other things. Uh, the first is that the first official episode of the Breakfast Show After Dark is now set, cast in stone, uh, for Wednesday evening uh, at 7 p.m. In addition to that, uh, we have a new film uh, featuring an interview with a man who produces some of the most detailed and desirable plant and attachment models in the known universe, Mr. Gaz Evans. Um, just so you know, um, models are not my thing. I've got some. Not sure if you can see them. Um, they are, they, there are models about this place. They're not really my thing, but um, our WhatsApp group, um, our Breakfast Show exclusive WhatsApp group suggested that I reach out to Gaz, which I did. And Gaz and um, his uh, colleague, and I believe fi fiance, uh, Lucinda, um, came back and said, yeah, we'd love to do that. Um, so we actually recorded that yesterday. It's already bolted together and it's ready to roll. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to share that um, film in, in advance over with our patrons at patreon.com forward slash demolition news. That will drop later today, so you'll be able to see it in advance before anyone else. It's about a 10 minute film, um, which I hope you'll enjoy. And then we will premiere the film on Monday for everyone else. What I'll probably do is, is, is extract a bit of it for the, uh, Monday's break fast show. But then after that show, um, I'll. 
I'll put it up as a premiere on um, both Facebook and YouTube. Right, that pretty much wraps up the main part of this morning's show. I'm going to roll the outro in just a second before leaping gazelle-like over into the chat to see what you're all saying today. If you can't stick around, then please stay safe. Look after yourself, your family, your friends, and your colleagues. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, and thanks for watching. Please try and stay cool. Try and stay hydrated. But if you do have the time and the inclination, and if you've got nothing better to do, I'll see you after this. 